Hey, it's me, Tom Goss, and if you know me, you know I love my studio. But there's one small problem. You got it? Planes. My studio is right in the flight path of LAX, which means I started to have airplanes in all of my recordings. I had to solve that. I enlisted the help of master builder, small space engineer, and super friend, Isabel LaRue. She's constantly making small spaces functional, livable, and beautiful. So if you live in an apartment and need ideas as to how to make it your own, check out her channel, Engineer Your Space. We got to work dreaming up a booth that would not only make recordings easy and take out the planes, but also be modular, just in case I moved. Additionally, we wanted that shit to be cute. Here's a step-by-step -step guide as to how we made our modular, movable, ISO booth all for under $1,400. All the equipment used will be in hyperlinks in the description below. So open up the description to get the right tools to make this project work. We knew to make a big box, we needed to make a lot of little boxes. So more or less, we started framing a house with each piece being independent of one another. For the floor, we are using half inch plywood, acoustic insulation, Artec foam board insulation, liquid nails, the high heat adhesive kind, lots of two by fours, and spax screws. For the ceiling, we are creating the same exact structure, but with less support because it's not holding weight, and a quarter inch plywood instead of a half inch plywood. This isolation booth is five feet by four feet and seven feet tall. To me, that felt like it gave me a little more flexibility to not only record vocals, but also record guitar or record a couple people at the same time without it feeling super cramped. So we went to work creating a box that was five by four. Of course, this is going to be a weight bearing floor, so we needed to create a lot of support so that people, when they're standing inside of it, don't fall through the floor. We also needed to be insulated against sound. And I had bought sound insulation panels before, and I always found it to be a little cumbersome and a little expensive and huge. It's almost more expensive to ship it than it is to actually buy it. But during my research, I found that Granger Supplies actually sells acoustic paneling, and just my luck, my studio is less than a mile away from a Granger Supply warehouse. So I bought a bunch of acoustic foam, had it shipped there, went and picked it up, and brought it to the studio. Again, all of the links to this equipment is down in the description. Now you see me stuffing a lot in here, and it got to the point where I realized that I hadn't quite bought enough acoustic paneling, and I thought about buying more, but then I realized cardboard is also acoustic paneling. So, one of the great things about this project is there was almost no trash. I used all the packaging inside the walls, so in addition to the acoustic insulation from Granger and the Artec foam board insulation, I also included all the cardboard. Now, I'm not a sound engineer, but one of the cool things I discovered about sound was one of the ways to impede sound from moving is to make it move through different densities of material. So if you go into a recording booth, you'll notice that there is double pane glass moving the sound through the pane, then through the air, then through the pane again really makes it hard for the sound to travel efficiency. So my thought was moving through the insulation, moving through the cardboard, and moving through the Artec foam board would make it confused. I know sound doesn't have confusion, but anyways, that was what I thought. So we stuffed our box full of insulation, covered it up, then we went to work making a support. One of the things we want to do is make this modular, so we're not going to screw the walls together. We want the walls to be snug to the floor, but also floating on their own so that they can come apart and be reassembled at a different location. The ceiling also has a base, so it'll simply sit atop the wall. We moved on to the wall, and the wall are essentially the same exact concept as the ceiling. We're just making a bunch of boxes, filling them with insulation, and setting them atop the floating frame that we are building. Now, the floating frame, is it gonna work? We had no idea. We wanted to create these giant grooves for the wall to sit in instead of screwing it all together. Again, if I move studios, I wanna be able to bring this with me. This is a big investment of my time and money, and if possible, I'd love to be able to use it for decades. So we created wall canals, a giant groove for the walls to sit in. We insulated the walls and the canals so that these walls aren't sitting wood on wood and rubbing against one another, creating unnecessary sound. The first moment of truth 
Will the walls fit in upright? Gonna get more insulation tape. And here we go. Yay! We did it. Instead of screwing the walls together, I bought toggle clamps and I clamped the walls together so that they are tight to one another and they are mashing the insulation tape so that it's really hard for the sound to get in. We put a couple pieces of wood on the walls inside of the booth to give the ceiling an additional support. Now the trickiest part was the final wall, which also was the door. It's easy to make a box. It's harder to make a box with a door in it. It's also a huge moment of truth. Did we make a box that is square? If this box isn't square, the door will not work. We centered the door, we made two small wall pieces to fill out the rest of the wall, and it took some shimmying, but the door got squared, and it opens and closes without a problem. We affixed both wall pieces to the side of the door, tightened them with the toggle clamps, and screwed the ceiling to the wall to stabilize it all together. Now we have a small, movable room. Here's the fun part, let's make it cute. I found these awesome hexagon acoustic panels that I knew could potentially be a rad design. Again, see the description below for the link to these items. They have so many colors and I wanted to make something that was chill and vintage. Now it was almost my birthday so I made a wish list on Amazon for these items and I got so many wonderful gifts from my lovely friends. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Monty Burns, Bruce Frenzy, Rudy Flugel, Drew Huffman, Jeffrey James, Christian Jewell, Larry Kay, Diego Lorenas, Martin McCann, Bobby Mendenhall, Maximus Monge, Bob Nankin, CJ Robinson, and Joshua Charles Parker for helping me finish this project in the cutest way possible. Now usually sound booths are black, but that seems very boring to me. So I decided with pink and gray. That would make the space feel brighter and more fun to work with. I went with F-Stop Labs acoustic foam, pink interlocking carpet, and a half inch elastic memory foam underneath it all. You have to soak the acoustic panels and let them air out. I've used the dryer before, but this was so many panels, I was cheap, and I just soaked them and let them sit out in the studio in the sun. I don't have my own washer and dryer, so I tried using the double-sided tape that was included with the acoustic phone, but it sucked and it took forever. So just use my advice and use liquid nails. It'll save you so much time and energy. What I wanted more than anything was to be able to use this booth myself, not just for sessions with other people. So I wanted a workstation inside the booth. I built a small collapsible table for my keyboard and mouse and installed a monitor. So now I could run the whole session from inside the booth. When I'm running sessions for other people, the table collapses down. And when I'm running it for myself, I just bring in my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. So does it work? Well, there's two parts to that. How does it keep the sound out? In the room, outside of the booth, the decibel level of exterior noise, when it's just silent, runs between 45 and 75 decibels. In the booth, in the same space, the decibel level of the exterior noise is much more constant, between 25 and 31 decibels. So, we've cut it between 30 to 70 percent, and I no longer have planes in my recordings, and I can record whenever I like. My neighbors thought I quit playing music because they never heard me singing anymore. The quality of the recordings inside the booth are exponentially better than they were before. Previously, in the room, it was a very live sound. There are 15 foot tin ceilings and that created a lot of delay and a lot of reverb. There was no amount of dampening that can make the space feel intimate. Now I have complete control over the sound. Total cost, $1,389 with the caveat that I did get some sound dampening for my birthday. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, friends. I appreciate it. I couldn't have done this without you. I would also like to thank Jonathan Gotti, Joshua Charles Parker, and Michael Briggs for being the muscle when we need a little more oomph, and Diego Lorenas for helping me design the exterior of the booth so that it looked cute, cute, and pretty. And of course, this would not have been possible without Isabel LaRue, who is always, every day, all the time, the smartest person in the room, and she's so brilliant. Again, go check out her channel, Engineer Your Space. She is wonderful. Again, all of the equipment that we used is in the description of this video, so click on the description and just look at all the hyperlinks I made for you. It makes it so easy for you to do this on your own or use it as inspiration and do your own thing. It's gonna be awesome. Anyways, thanks again. If you have any questions, just hit it up in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much, bye.